You're most likely not charging enough for your project. In this video, I'll be giving you a full guide to help you make more money. Hi guys, my name is Chili and I'm a senior UX UI product designer based in London. So how much should you be charging? The new year has started and I'm sure many of us have finances as part of our goals. One way to reach those financial goals is to use your skills as a designer and take on some freelance projects to make some extra cash. But how much to charge? This is a question I have asked and have been asked many times over the years. I've watched so many videos on setting prices, but putting everything you learn into practice can be hard. Talking about money can be very uncomfortable. You don't want to set your price too high and scare the client off, but then you don't want to undercharge for your skills. Over the years, through a lot of trial and error and a lot of error, I feel like I've finally got the hang of setting prices. The biggest error that helped me to get to this stage was the fact that I was undercharging for designs. I was getting so frustrated with the amount of work and how little I was getting paid that I stopped offering freelance work altogether. People would approach me for design work and I would just say no. I'll explain more how this was helpful later on in the video. For the context of this video, the project I'm using as an example is a website, but the information can be applicable to any project, whether it's logo design, marketing banners, or even non-design projects like consulting. Let me know in the comments what freelance services you want to be offering. There's no one size fits all with pricing. It could be a few hundred dollars or it could be over $10,000, but there are a few things to consider when setting that price. The first thing to consider is the scope of the project, the complexity of it. Are you creating a landing page, a simple website with just a few pages or lots of pages or something more complex like an e-commerce platform? The more pages there are, the more time it will take to design. Does it have any animations or is it static? This should be considered as part of the complexity. Are there any additional features you want to integrate like a content management system, a calendar for booking appointments or a blog? The next thing you'll want to take into account is whether you're doing everything yourself or you need to hire a team. If you can't code, you can make websites yourself using no code tools like Webflow, or you can hire an engineer to code it. There are different ways to price your project. Let's go through the different types of pricing along with their pros and cons. So the first one is per hour. This one is my least favorite way of pricing, even though it's the easiest. So the pro is it's the easiest way to price if it's a big or complex project and you're struggling to estimate how long it will take, you get paid exactly for what you do and exactly for how long it takes. This can be seen as more fair for both you and the client as they only pay for the actual amount of time it takes you to do the project. It's also good for when a client requests for additional work or changes. It becomes fairly simple to estimate based on how long you think it will take. The con, however, is that you're being punished for working efficiently. The more experienced you are, the faster you tend to work. So now you're getting paid less. Yes, you can increase your hourly rate, but you're still not getting paid enough. Also, a client won't understand why certain things take four hours, for example. It's easy to look at a final design and think that should take an hour or so. But design has a process and the final design you see could be the 10th version. They might think you're taking longer to complete the work in order to earn more. And this can make it difficult for clients to budget for a project as they need to know exactly how much they will be paying at the end of the project. So the next one is value-based pricing, and this is a better way to charge in my opinion. This is setting the price of a product or service based on the perceived value it provides the client rather than the cost of producing it. For example, if you're dealing with a client that you know this website could potentially double their income, you will charge them more than a business that just needs an online presence, even if the projects both take the same amount of time. This means having a better understanding of your client and their potential budget. Clients might not want to reveal their budgets before hearing your prices. Some clients might see you as an amateur if your prices are too low, so it's not always about giving the lowest price. So the pro of this is that you can charge more, especially if you work fast and you have a lot of experience. It's no longer about how many hours you spent on it and more about your expertise. The con is you're doing a lot of guesswork here in terms of setting the price. It can be difficult to determine how the client sees the value of their website, but this is where you help them to understand the value that you provide and how the websites that you create lead to good results. And you can only do this if you're creating high quality work that is of industry standard. It can also lead to pricing disparities between similar websites if your customers know that you charge someone else less. The third way of pricing is subscriptions. Subscription-based designs have become very popular over the past few years. Previously, this was mainly used for clients who require constant changes or updates to a website that was already live. However, more recently, it's becoming more popular for brand new designs. So rather than having to price each project, you have a monthly flat fee and this saves you a lot of time and you can avoid having the money talk and negotiations. It also means you have a constant stream of income. 
So that was the different types of pricing strategies you can use. And now for some actual real numbers, I know this is what you came here for. So how much should you charge? I found this website that you can use as a guide for pricing. You will have to adjust these prices depending on the country that you live in. It might not be as easy as converting them from USD to your currency. If you're finding this useful, please hit the like button. So I found this website called Cash Your Flow and it's to help you price your project for Webflow. But we're going to use it for pricing a website in general. Here we can go to calculate your fees. You start off by saying how much experience you have. So in terms of design in general, we're going to go with a midway, not quite senior yet. And someone who's on a 25 an hour is making around $50,000 a year. So we're going to use that as our base. You can play around with this. Then how complex is it? So let's make it a middle. How many pages, maybe 10. And then this is how many different layouts. Even though it might be 10 pages, some of these might be similar. So maybe five and the interaction. We want a little bit of interaction so it looks smooth. So CMS, are we adding anything like a blog? For now, we'll say no. Integration, we'll just put it to no integration for the time being and then you go next. So this is another thing you should also think about when you're setting your prices. Is this something you're excited about? It's okay to charge less if it's a cool job. These are similar questions, but not quite the same. So one is about the project itself and the other one is about the client. How excited are you to do this? If you've got a big brand and it's a life changer, you can charge a bit less to, to make sure you get them. But remember what I said about certain clients if you charge too low. So you just play around with these. Let's just say it's business as usual, but quite interesting. It's good for your portfolio. Yeah. So we're just going to keep them there. There's a lot more little details to add in, but for this example, let's just skim through it. Is the client giving you a short deadline? So that's another thing to think about. We're going to just leave that. Remember to always take a deposit before you do any work. If you want me to make a video on the process of actually working with clients and taking deposits and payments, let me know in the comments. Here is about your availability. So if you're working on a lot of projects together, that means you're gonna have less sleep, so therefore you charge more. Here, we're gonna just keep it at one. You know, you're pretty free. How many hours can you commit a week? If you have a full-time job, if you're doing three hours a day, let's just calculate that. Here we've got an estimate of $4,600. I'm gonna put a link to this in the description below and you can play around with the numbers for yourself. I know it can seem unbelievable that there are people willing to pay these prices for a website. This is the awards website. I use it to find some great inspiration of websites out there. If you go into directory, you've got all these agencies and remember an agency could also be one person and you can filter it by the quotes. We can do under 5,000 and see what kind of websites Let's visit it. This looks like a great website. We can also go over 30,000 and see what kind of websites are made there. Let's look at this car website and visit it. Obviously it's a very beautiful website. Both the websites we've just seen are very beautiful, but the difference is the client and their budget. If those numbers feel a bit high, you can adjust them to a number that makes you feel more comfortable. But I've got a few tips to help you feel more confident when setting your prices. Number one, be more comfortable talking about money. Yes, it can feel unnatural, but it's a sign of good business acumen. You need to be able to talk about money in order to make it. You can start by giving clients a range of prices. For example, for a project like this, we usually charge between X and Y. This will then open up the negotiation, especially if your client hasn't said what their budget is yet. If your prices are on the higher end, there's a psychology around saying the highest number first, which is called price anchoring. So you'd say for a project like this, we usually charge between 15,000 pounds to 10,000 pounds. Number two is how you negotiate. If the client's budget is less than your price, let's say 30%, you can negotiate by offering less features or alternatives that you know will save you time. This way, both you and the client are happy. Tip number three, which is your experience. The more experience you are, the more you will charge. If you have zero experience, you might even offer your services for free, just so you can have a live project in your portfolio. But if, for example, you have five years of design experience, they're not just paying you for the hours you put into the designs, they're also paying for the years of experience to accumulate that knowledge. Tip number four, be confident in your skills. Can you deliver what you are offering? If you can deliver what you are offering, 
the client will get exactly what they're paying for. If you're still learning, you can do practice projects to give you that confidence. In this case, you can create whole websites and learn the steps needed to attach a domain to them. I also have a video with tips on how to improve your design skills, which I will link up there somewhere and in the description below. The next thing to remember is that you will always regret undercharging. Projects always take longer than you think and you want to account for that. Good design can add so much value to a business. It can make them look more trustworthy to their clients and can set them apart from their competitors. So that is something always to remember. You're helping your clients make more money. If you make a $200 website for a new business that then goes on to make 100K, they're not gonna come back and give you money for helping them out all those years ago. So this is the time for you to make your money. And the most important tip is to be ready to walk away, which I mentioned earlier. So this can be tricky when you're just getting started and need to build a portfolio. So this tip may not be for you, but for those who have extensive experience, you have to have a number that you're not willing to work for. There will always be someone cheaper than you. With platforms such as Fiverr and Canva, anyone can offer design as a service which is a great thing that design is accessible to more people, but worrying about people who charge less than you is a race to the bottom. If you're focused on constantly improving your design skills and creating high quality designs at the top of industry standard, then you're not competing on price, but on quality and the value you add. And it's an age old tale that clients who pay more tend to be easier to work with. They just have less demand. So you want to move towards having more of these kind of clients. I hope you found this video helpful and you are ready to go out there and reach your freelancing goals. Don't forget to hit that like button. I'm still doing my giveaway where you can win a one-to-one -one mentoring session with me. All you have to do is subscribe to my mailing list and engage in my content on any social platform. So like, comment, subscribe. I'll be picking one person each week. Thank you so much and I will see you in my next video.